Hello everybody, welcome to another episode of Cape Rugby TV. Nice to have you along. Of course, lots of rugby activity. We're starting to get into Super 15 now. One of these days, Super 15 fever is going to hit us at a note. Uh, Super 15 teams have already started practicing. Of course, lots of sevens action. As, as we know, it's been happening in and around Cape Town. We'll touch on that during the course of the show. And uh, not to mention the fact that the Varsity Cup and the Varsity Shield has now kicked off. We'll talk all about that during the uh, course of the show. With me on the panel this evening, no strangers to Cape Rugby TV. And we'll start off on my far right with the uh, Springbok Sevens legend himself, Paul Delport. Hello, Paulie. Hi, Jeff. It's good to be back. I'm not actually sure if we should maybe refer to you more as a Cape Rugby TV coaching legend or a <laughs> Springbok Sevens legend. But yeah, lucky to have you here. Uh, thanks, Jeff. I think we can, we can take the legend out and just Cape Rugby TV coach. All right, we'll slash you, logistics slash manager. We'll give you a couple of years and then we'll, we'll refer to you in the legend space. <laughs> Speaking of legends, Morgan Newman, how are you, my man? How's it, Jeff? Good to be back on the show. Thanks for having me. Yeah, you've been, uh, you've been busy? Yeah, fairly busy. I mean, I was away the weekend, but I was watching all the rugby on TV. So, yeah, there's lots happening and lots of uh, rugby action Saturday, Monday. So, it's, yeah, it's all happening. Yeah, of course, on Monday night, a lot of it kicked off. Uh, you managed to watch any of the Varsity Cup games? Yeah, I watched my uh, my old uh, my old team, old Stellenbosch University. I watched them go down, unfortunately, to um, to to a, to a quite a strong side. So yeah, I mean, look, they didn't play well, and I've spoken to Chris, and he says that the teams, yeah, I mean, they're not, you know, they're not firing on all cylinders, but they'll get there. You know, Stellenbosch are often the team that starts fairly slowly, and then they pick it up in the momentum towards the end of the season and yeah. make the playoffs. So. Hopefully they can do the same this year. Yeah, uh, of course I was out there at UWC over the weekend, at least not over the weekend, keep thinking rugby's on the weekend. It's not, it's now on Monday night, it's Monday night football, so to speak. Uh, yeah, I was at UWC on Monday night, a lot of people sending selfies there, we said we'd put some of those on the show, but uh, didn't quite get around to that, but we checked it out on Twitter. Um, incidentally, that U UWC's uh, Twitter handle is at UWC online. Um, but yeah, it is Varsity Cup, of course the FNB Steinhoff, uh, Cell C, um, Varsity Cup that's happening at the moment. Let's take a look now at the Varsity Shield there. You see the second round results. FNB uh, UKZN uh, going down to Fort Hare, 17 points to 12. And then, of course, UWC losing by just three points against uh, TUT. So it was a close one uh, there for UWC. They were leading for quite a while and TUT coming back strongly. So, yeah, not quite the result that... Uh, former Springbok coach Peter de Villiers was looking for um, and of course Oliver, Oliver Janssen also uh, involved there but uh, uh, TUT definitely coming down and, and uh, showing that uh, they, they're getting used to traveling should we put it that way and then of course the other result there was Fort Hare. Um, we were hoping to be joined by the captain today Freddie Miller uh, the captain of UWC of course no stranger to Cape Rugby TV as well but it was, it was, a, it was a tough game. Morgz, I, know, I know you guys weren't out there but um, you know speaking to um, uh, Peter de Villiers and Oliver Janssen and some of the guys after the game, they felt that by now, after this is the second game, they kind of felt like it wasn't enough to say anymore we're getting used to it in the season. They've uh, practiced enough, they should have got into it, um, but they felt that they should have won the home game. Yeah, I mean, as you know, as we spoke last year, you know, it's important for teams to win their home games. I mean, you know that uh, there's not many teams in the in the varsity shield. So your home games, you win all your home games, you tend to one going to make it into the top two or three, you know, and get there for playoffs. So, yeah, it's not a good one to lose, but it obviously just means that now coming this and following Monday, they've got to make it up and you know go, go get a victory away from home. So it's not going to be easy, but but yeah, I mean the varsity shields also now it's been been shown it's a tight competition and teams, you know, with the amount of um, warm-up games these teams play now. There's no reason why they, they, you should go into the first game feeling like you need to get into the swing of things. You know, they've probably had three or four warm games and they should be firing all cylinders as Peter Davilles would have, would have said to the guys. Yeah, but how do you, how much, how, ma how many matches, I mean, Paulie, how many matches do you need before, like we're on the second match, but if, if you're playing these warm-up matches, we know the Stormers are playing some warm-up matches now and the Sharks went overseas, they played against, what, they played against Saracens, I think. How many warm matches do you need before you play and get ready and, and are able to play in, say, the Curry Cup or in the Super 15 and and be ready to go. Oh, Jeffs, it's tough. Um, I think I can understand the UWC coaching staff's frustration. I think yeah, UWC is the one team in the Varsity Shield that that you think, just looking to the, over the past you know year, year or two, um, have a very settled squad. So you'd think you'd, they, they, they don't need too many guys. Look out how long a guy like Freddie Miller's been around, uh, Peter de Villiers has been around for a while. So the continuity is is there and I think it is a bit frustrating you know just personally and I'm obviously biased coming from the Western Cape wanting our teams to do well but I thought UWC would be dominating the the, the varsity shield now well you know there was a lot of speak 
uh, over the last couple of days that UWC is the team that will win the Shield. And of course, this year is promotion and relegation. So um, if, if they win this, they'll, they'll go up. Uh, they, they seem to be confident that they are going to win it. Yeah, look, I mean, it's not, it's not doom and gloom. I mean, it's, you know, one game out of a possible, whatever, it's six or seven it is. Mm. So there's still lots of time to make it up. But yeah, it's always, you know, momentum and winning culture is, is, is two, two words that Peter DeVille has used quite often when I, you know, when he worked, when I worked with him. So you'll definitely be wanting to gain a bit of momentum and, 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 you know, get that winning culture back and then have to do it, you know, on the turn and, and come this Monday is probably the perfect time to do it. All right, well, there you go. Uh, as usual, we put together a little photo collage for you of... Uh, the uh, Varsity Cup and Varsity Shield matches. Let's take a look. Some of the action picks now. So TUT there coming away with the victory. Let's take a look at the logs. UWC still on top of the log. Um, five points. That's, of course, after they scored their uh, win against Fort Hare last week. TUT have now climbed up to seven, second place. Of course, UWC on points difference uh, there. So uh, puts them in, still on the top of the log in the shield. Then CUT, Fort Hare, and uh, UKZN who came away with a, a good win yesterday. Let's take a look now at the Varsity um, Cup results. Some interesting matches that were played there. NMMU, 45-29 against Marty's. UCT went down to Pucker. That was a bit of a shock, 47-24. And then Tux drawing with UJ and Schimlers. Well, it was a good win for them against um, Vitz. 31-15 um, against Vitz there. But if we look, look at that, the, the disappointing, I mean, all three Western Province teams lost here. Uh, <laughs> a little bit of a disappointment probably for Kevin Musicant, who's been all fired up. Um, we know he's got, he's got his hands busy with, I think, about four or five different rugby teams. Um, going down UCT, there were a lot of sad guys on Monday. Yeah, look, there was lots of talk about, you know, this UCT coming out, the uh, team coming out and playing a group brand of rugby. And obviously, you know, under the guidance of Kevin Music and, and the success that he's had, you know, over the over all the teams that he's been with. I would have expected a different result, to be honest. But but again, you know, um, I don't know how much preparation they've had in terms of warm-up matches and that kind of thing. So, you know, maybe, uh, maybe they also will, will peak a little bit later in the season. I know last year they came off a really horrid season. So this year, hopefully they can improve. And I mean, yeah, it's a bad start. But again, like I said, uh, you know, with, the, with the nine or ten games to play in the, in the Varsity Cup, there's no reason why they can't turn it around. Well, do you think um, there's uh, still a bit of a lagging of uh, last year's not great season? Yeah, sure. I think Morgie, Morgie touched on it earlier, chatting about, about UWC, building that, that, that winning culture. And for the guys coming off, off, off last season, it is, um, it, it's going to be a hell of a mindset change. Uh, mm. But I, I truly believe you, you look at that UCT squad, some quality players. Kevin's proven, you know, having brought f uh, the success with False Bay, mm. he's proven he's a he's a very good coach. Uh, they've got a very good su very good su support staff, and uh, I think the guys will 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 get better and better. Yeah, it's go it's going it's going to be a bit, a bit tough, but <clears throat> maybe they're also just finding their feet. You know, now that Kevin Foot is gone, the team probably just has to settle down a bit. So I think Kevin's going to be successful, and and and, and at UCT we know they've always got talented players. I mean, they've certainly got the depth. Yeah, that. They do, Jabs, definitely. Um, especially, uh, you know, you, you always think of, of, of UCT and the more, the, more, the more English sides, even at school, ask Morgie being at Bishops or Saks or Ronnebosch, we always struggled against the, against the Paul Jim and the Paul Riss and the, and the Paul Boys in the forward <laughs> department. And I think, yeah, I, I, I think that's where UCT um, 
has has always struggled in the past. I've heard and I've seen they actually they actually picked up quite quite a bit this year, and I'm look, looking forward to seeing their their forwards dominate a bit. You know, the, yeah. the, the backs are never a problem at UCT. Morgz, it was a, an away game for Marty's. Um, again, I mean, going what you said earlier on, maybe it's not an excuse anymore. Marty's is a strong side. You spoke to Chris. What do, what do you think went wrong there? 45 points. Yeah, look, I mean, uh, it's funny that Paulie says that, you know, because, uh, I mean, if the little bit that I, have, I managed to watch, um, Stelimos got dominated up front, you know. I think they scored three or four driving tries. So up front, they were really, you know, um, sort of uh, dominated. But then again, it was also, I saw if one or two um, Stelimos players that played for Stelimos last year playing in the, in the opposition team this week. So, you know, there's a lot of teams, the guys, I mean, uh, the Varsity Cup seems to be a place now where guys move from different university to different universities. So, you know, they probably knew the calls and they probably knew had some inside info. So, yeah, rough start for Stellenbosch. But again, you know, with the, with, the, with the depth that these guys have and the amount of talent that Chris has got to pull from, they'll turn it around in no, in no time, you know. So I look forward to next week and seeing Stellenbosch get a result. Yeah. Let's take a look at some of the highlights uh, from the match Smarties against uh, NMMU. These are, again, some action shots. <laughs> So yeah, it didn't go Marty's way, but it uh, looked like there was quite a lot of action there. And of course, uh, that's, what, that's what we're looking for. Lots of running action. Um, it was a little bit confusing, though. We spoke to some of the guys yesterday, uh, at least on, on Monday night, after some of the new rules. Remember, two referees. Uh, there's this, uh, and we wanted clarity on this uh, kicking and then when you can mark it. What happens is um, you kick it, you mark it, but that plays an immediate advantage. So you don't just mark and stay. Okay, so that, what the guys are saying is that, yes, we thought that, uh, that what would happen is um, this would prevent the guys from just kicking the ball away. But what the, guy, the players said on Monday, and I'm sure that they'll still find their rhythm, is that it slowed the game down a bit as opposed to speeding the game up. I don't know, Paul, your thoughts? Yeah, it, it could. Uh, any, any, any new rule coming in, uh, it's, it's, it's bound to confuse the guys in, in, the, in the first couple of weeks. I imagine the, the referees as well. You know, when there's something like a box kick going up and under has been part of the game for years and years, and all of a sudden there, there's, there's another element that, uh, that they have to think about. Uh, but like you said, Jabs, like a couple of teething pains. You know, it, it's 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 always going to happen when you when you bring new things in to make to make the game more exciting and to and and to flow a bit. And I think it will be something that will make the game flow. Yeah, um, I was reading about Jonathan Kaplan in, in I think in the UCT's uh, magazine saying that that, that the that the mall the mall is so important. And of course, we know that the props have now got these these new jerseys in the Varsity Cup as well. Morgs, um with the new rules, I mean, there shouldn't be really any any effect on the mall, and we, but we haven't really seen much mauling yet in in the varsity games. Yeah, I mean, look, like, um, f with the mauling, obviously they'll find different. You know, uh, with like like Capoli says, you know, these teething problems. I think they'll find loopholes too. You know, um, with the, with the, with the with the prop having a different kind of jersey, I, I would imagine that there'd be different kinds of ways to bind onto him. So as much as it may work in the favour of the attacking team. I think defensively, if you yeah. can grab onto this thing and pull the prop back, <laughs> you, might the, you might settle the problem, you know. So I think these guys will find loopholes as well as, as, finding, um, as, well as finding, you know, things that, that will help them improve their own game. But just coming back to your, your statement about the referees, I'm not convinced about these two referees. Uh, at, at one point, I was hearing two whistles go at the same, I mean, you, one blows for one thing and the, and the one hand is out, and the other hand is, 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 doesn't know who makes the call first. So 
I think it's a little bit of a gray area with regards to those two referees. I, I initially thought it was going to be each ref will do a half each, which, which kind of makes sense to me. You know, but now that I see... No, no, the both, idea is to have two refs on the field at the same time. It's like Corsair's rugby. Yeah, but the problem with that was what I found was watching the games was when there's an advantage, who then calls the advantage over? Because what might look like an advantage to the one ref seems like a, a lifetime to the other. So yeah. I, I just imagine myself hearing two whistles go for different offenses, if you know what I'm trying to say. So you know what I quite liked about it is I was watching the UWC game, and, and to be honest with you, watching the game, I know that there were two refs in the... F and in fact, I'm not even sure if they were in the Shield match, but I couldn't see two refs, you know, looking across the field because you always see a ref somewhere, but I never really spotted the second ref. And what, what I was thinking was that, you know, and we, we're going to talk about the referees course uh, during the course of the show. Um, f folks, by the way, if you want to become a referee, it's free. We're going to tell you when the, when, the, when, the, when the referees' courses are during the next three weeks. It's free. And remember, once you've qualified as a referee, you can then join the referee society and then go and referee and uh, make yourself a bit of pocket money on a Saturday. I think they pay 200 rand a game. So it's a great way for you to ref at a club close to you and uh, you know, get involved and also keep supporting Western Province Rugby because we know we're short on referees. So free referees courses, I suggest if you're out there, go and do it. But Morgs, what I was thinking was, um, it, it's a fantastic way for, um, for uh, actually it's like a learning curve, that if you have a good referee on the one side yeah. and maybe you have a, a younger, new referee on the other side, you know, he can be on the field at the same time. If he spots something wrong, he can blow. But in general, you know, if I watched like yesterday, the, yes. uh, at least on Monday, JD was one referee and Joey Salman was the other referee. Um, there were, and there, I think there were two other, other refs. But what a great opportunity for a guy to be learning. Imagine if Jonathan Kaplan is refereeing a game and then you've got a young guy who's just coming through, he's just busy learning the ref and he's on the other side. You know, he gets the, the speed of the game, the feel of the game. I don't know what your thoughts are. No, I think that, uh, that's, that's uh, look, if, if that was the, the reason for having two refs. No, it wasn't. That was just me yeah. making a, a no, no, no. you know, being <laughs> I know, but super if, intelligent. If, if, the, if that was the case, I would have been supportive, supportive of it. But because of the fact that it's not for a learning curve, it's literally to improve the refereeing of the game, I don't know if I'm that supportive of it, but again, I mean, look, as, uh, yeah, it's good to see. And, and as the tournament progresses, I think we'll see the, the sort of the, you know, the more, it'll become more, more fluid in the game. I mean, there's no, there's no tournament, Paulie, there's no tournament in the world that didn't start out or start up as a, a new thing that no one really understood. So when Seven started, um, none of us, we thought, this is ridiculous. You're taking a 15-man yeah. game, now it's a Sevens game. This is impossible. I mean, this isn't real rugby. When gridiron football started, and we know that that's the biggest lot of rubbish because they only play three <laughs> seconds at a time. Like, literally, they only play three, <laughs> three seconds at a time. And then they change the play. Yeah. No one understands it, but then they change the rules and stuff like that. Um, and in the beginning, says, this is crazy. But after a while, one settles into it, and all of a sudden, it's got a bit of a, sp a vibe. Oh, yeah, you're right. Um, I think you're... Your idea of, of the refs and Morgan Morgan touching on it as well. I think I think that's a that's a fantastic idea. That's maybe if they haven't thought about it, that's that's something that they that, yeah. that they definitely should. Because on the flip side, there's the danger you just spoke about NFL and we all watch the Super Bowl, is that now you have two refs, then you add three, now all of a sudden you have a yellow a yellow little cloth going on and this and that and then the game becomes like an NFL game which is the last thing that we want. Yeah, it all becomes almost like a like a like, it's like a PlayStation game. You, know? you can just throw in all sorts of toys and get points for anything and add in more weapons. It's just <laughs> insane. I've never played PlayStation in my life. But um yeah, it just becomes crazy. Yeah, yeah. Um but again, like like you were saying, I think these the these are going to be problematic in the first couple of weeks and they mm. they are going to be ironed out as the as the tournament moves forward. Right, folks, in case you don't know, there, during the Varsity Cup, there's, of course, the Pink Shorts campaign. The Pink Shorts campaign is the Keep the Agro on the, the, the Field campaign. And what really it is, is about the campaign against women abuse. Um, it is kindly sponsored. Of course, the Varsity Cup is kindly sponsored by F&B, Steinoff, Celsi, and Spur. Now, what happens in the Pink Shorts campaign is, uh, of course, there are two strategic breaks. There's a, after each 20 minutes, there's a five-minute water break in the first half and the second half. Now, the two minutes after the strategic break, for that two-minute period, the players play with a pink ball. And any time a try is scored, then those four sponsors donate 1,250 rand to the home team's charity. Now, in this case, UWC, where I was on Monday, the home team's charity is the Sarki Bartman uh, Center out in Athlone, which does an incredible job. And uh, then, of course, the money goes to that team's charity. So that's, of course, the Pink Shorts campaign. And uh, I think it's well worth um, supporting that campaign. By the way, if you go to the next UWC game, they're going to ask you a five rand donation to uh, the uh, Sarki Bartman Center. Of course, that's UWC's um, 
charity of choice, as I've said. Let's look a look at some of the highlights in the action shots. UCT against Tepuka. <laughs> Certainly looking exciting there, of course, uh, UWC against Pucker. Let's take a look now at the Logs and Varsity Cup. And uh, Pucker are firmly in the lead there on five points with NMMU just behind them. So not maybe that firmly, but at least there is a points difference. Followed by Schimler's Tux, UJ Vitz. And sadly for the Western Rollins side, Marty's are at the bottom together with UCT. Let's take a look at the fixtures now uh, coming up in the Varsity Shield. Of course, uh, this coming up Monday, it's uh, uh, CUT up against UWC. So UWC playing away in Bloemfontein. Kickoff there at 7 o'clock. And then TUT, who played at uh, UWC on uh, Monday, take on Fort Hare in Pretoria. So it's a home game for TUT against Fort Hare. In the Varsity Cup, we'll see Marty's take on Ike's uh, kickoff there at 10 to 5. Home game advantage for Marty's. This is very much going to be like an inter varsity. And then, of course, Witt's take on Tux. UJ takes on NMMU. And Pucker plays Schimler's in Poch. Um, would you call that a little bit of an inter varsity derby match? Of course, it's a derby match, but would, would you call it an inter varsity, Pulley? Yeah, I would. There's going to be a lot of feeling there. Um, it's going to be going to be very interesting. The guys, yeah. both of them coming off losses, they're going to they're going to have big points to prove. And Marches especially, Morgi Morgi touched on it earlier. Very important to win your home games in these tournaments. Morgi, you played you played for Marches for a number of years. When this when these games happen, I mean, is it a, an official inter varsity? Um, no, the inter varsity is actually played. The, it's the first league game of the first round in the in the in the in the in the actual league. Yeah. So the varsity cup just serves as a obviously as a, a warm up to this, but but look, it's the first one of the year, and any game you play against um, the it's going to be yeah. <laughs> any game you play against UCT is, is always a big one. So, and like Paulie says, both teams coming off a loss. I'll, I think I'll be down there on Monday night. I think it'll do, be some serious uh, battle. Do the students still do the students still jump on the train to go through and watch the game? Yeah, there's still a, there's still a few buses that will be trekked through from uh, from uh, from the what's it called now UCT? From, the, from UCT from yeah. Kreskia. Yeah. There's a few buses that will be will be trekked down there, and then they, they start fairly early and. They, and they finish really late, so <laughs> yeah, I don't really think there'll be many students in the cl in class know, on Tuesday morning. There's one train I don't want to be a train conductor on. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Right, folks, we'll take an ad break, and when we come back, we'll start taking a look at what happened in the world of sevens over the weekend. Of course, it was the West Bank sevens, and wow, would you believe it? St. George's walking away with a victory. Let's uh, check that out after the break. Let's take a look now at the highlights from the West Bank sevens. <laughs>
So it certainly looks like everybody had a lot of fun at the West Bank Sevens, as of course was expected, because if we go, if the Strand Pioneer Sevens is anything to go by, and of course the Villagers Super Sevens was anything to go by, then entertainment galore at any Sevens tournament is what you're looking at. I know quite a few people have been asking us, would we start a Cape Rugby TV Sevens tournament? We've now had requests for um, the Cape Rugby 15s team to, to get out there and play in Milneton, and uh, of course the Cape Town Tens is coming up. We didn't quite make it into, into the Tens, I think we just ran out of time there, but Paulie, you say you've had a couple of requests for guys to play in, I mean, this, in, in the, in the All-Stars Cape Rugby side. Yeah, gee, I had a, had a couple of requests over the last week or so since the Strand Pioneers tournament to uh, get, some of the, get some of the Cape Rugby TV guys involved in some of the other teams. Uh, but just let everybody know we, um, we're sticking together. Uh, you know what I really enjoyed? You know, I was watching, um, I think I was watching the highlights. Yes, I was watching maybe on, on Supersport. I was watching the highlights of the uh, HSBC 7s. And, and as you see the teams do, you know, as you guys did um, at the Strand Pioneers, you know, the team comes together and they put their hands in and they, they sort of, I don't know, with, 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 uh, with, with, the, um, with the Blitz Booker, they were uh, like, Booker, ah, something <laughs> like that. And uh, what I really loved, and I, I don't know how you guys came up with it because I certainly wasn't involved with it, but you guys did the... You put your hands in there, and you all everybody's hands over one over the other, you know, the whole team, and you went KPs. And I just thought, what a great name or nickname for our side, the KPs. It's so it sort of epitomizes what Cape Town is about and who we are. Moves. Yeah, look, I mean, I think one of the guys just, you know, when you're in the idol, you've got two seconds to think about it. So one of the guys just, you know, came up with KPs, and then I was being the captain, I was the one that shouted KPs for the rest of the day. KPs. So. Yeah, I mean, look, I don't know where it, where it, but where it comes from, but yeah, I mean, like you said, the Pitamizers is what we, we Cape Rugby TV team stands for, you know, we're a oh, bunch of Cape Town brothers that and play what, together. And what, what Cape Rugby TV, the show is almost all about, is it like, like, I mean, it's a real community kind of word, KPs. Yeah, look, I mean, yeah, there's, a, there's lots of connotations linked to the word yeah. KP, so no, it suits perfectly well, and, and I think it'll stick now with us, and like Paulie says, you know, we're a band of brothers that all come together and have some fun in different clubs, but when the guys get there on the day, they come there and they play for the, for the KPs, yeah, <laughs> so, the KPs, so yeah, yeah, no, it'll, let, uh, long, let, long can let it live. Yeah, no, okay, let's take a look here, and of course, uh, St. George's, well done St. George's, the guys that we were uh, up against uh, at Strand Pioneers, and there you see the St. George's guys celebrating their victory at the, um, um, at the West Bank Sevens and walking away with a prize money of 12,500 Rand. Congratulations there to the guys uh, from West Bank. Well done, guys, uh, uh, for putting on such a great tournament um, in Malmesbury. And, of course, well done to St. George's. You guys did fantastic. I love seeing these club uh, teams come out and start uh, training um, as, as a team and, and really putting it on. So, St. George's, well done, guys. HSBC Sevens is coming up in Wellington. Of course, the Blitz Booker will be in action, and we'll be looking forward to watching their performance. And I'm sure that they're going to be looking to repeat their last result that they had when they beat New Zealand at the HSBC Sevens in Las Vegas. Now, it's not going to be as easy as, as it sounds. They've been on the road for a while. Paulie, how much is all this traveling going to... How much of a toll is this traveling going to take on, 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 on the Blitz Booker? Yeah, it's going to be it's going to be a different one. Uh, this is this is the first time uh, where the guys have played a tournament, had a week off, and then and then and then playing another tournament. I think also going from from Vegas where they're ten hours behind us now to Wellington where they're eleven hours ahead of us. Oh yeah. Um, it, it is a bit of a tough one, but then again, every every team that played in Vegas uh, is going through the same thing. Yeah. Um, I mean, what, you know what they say, what, what happens in Vegas stays in Vegas. <laughs> but um, in this case, we're actually going to talk about what happened in Vegas. What did happen in Vegas was they played against New Zealand in the final. Now they're going to be playing against New Zealand on home ground. Yeah. And of course, everybody's going to be looking to see whether or not South Africa is going to be up against New Zealand and make it through to the finals. And if they are, it's going to be Kiwi home ground. How much advantage will that give the, 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 the Kiwis? Uh, home, gr home ground advantage is always big, Jeffs. But... Uh for us, um, I don't think everyone knows the Blitzbocker, the last, the last five finals we've played against New Zealand, we've beaten them. So I think New Zealand are getting a bit desperate at the moment. I mean, they're, they're, they're an absolutely quality sevens team. And I think if you, if you look at the games uh, overall in the, in the series, they're still leading by about 30 games, yeah. uh, having, having won over us. Um, but for us, I think for the, for, for the Blitzbocker going, Neil, Neil Powell and, and Kyle Brown said in the beginning, we, we just want consistency. So we, we make it to a semi-final, and then it's 50-50. It's you make it to a semi, make it to a final, and I'll, you know, personally, I'll, I'll, I'll always back the guys to win. I, I never, just to go back to on, the, on the Kyle thing, I, had, I didn't know that Kyle never played for Western Province Rugby. No, he did. 
He didn't. Uh, he didn't play. He, he, he didn't play Craven Week. I think he was in the under twenty one squad. He played for Boyland years ago. Yeah, he ended up playing for Boyland and under twenty ones, and then um, actually snapped up from Varsity Cup uh, two thousand and eight. Paul True. Paul True saw him playing, and then I think we, we actually. I think Paul actually saw his uh, test results. His bench press and all that kind of thing yeah, he's got, a got invited to got invited to the sevens and made it from there well he's got a fairly large set of guns on him <laughs> um they should be licensed let's take a look now at the uh, route that the uh, blitzbocker will be traveling of course they're playing in pool a against south africa england portugal and wales now you can catch this uh, 3 24 a.m on the 7th of february uh, their first match against Wales, their second match at quarter past six in the morning, so you better get up nice and early against Portugal. And then, of course, uh, South Africa play against England. The Cape Town 10s will be coming up uh, this coming weekend, and I'm sure you want to get down there and have an absolute jaw. Once again, lots of uh, excitement. The, uh, there's going to be plenty of rugby teams there. There's going to be a netball tournament, local international rugby legends, live entertainment, kiddies play areas and activities. Um, and, and lots more excitement there. Let's take a look at the pools that will be uh, playing in the Premier Division. It's Marty's, False Bay Villagers and uh, the UCD Tigers in Pool A. Then in Pool B, it's the Hamilton Raiders. It's, of course, Hammies. SK Warmers, NNK and Cravens. The Cravens being the Marty's side. And then Pool C, the UCD Nighthawks, the uh, Western Province, I suppose that's WPRA Davidson Boards. I don't know, maybe that's a... Wood Company, Villagers, and then uh, Hamilton's. Morgs, um, these two teams, let's just ask you, in terms of what's been Hamilton Raiders and the Hamilton Muscle Crackers, um, are those both Hamilton's rugby teams? Yeah, they're both Hamilton's teams. They're both, um, obviously, you know, they, it's, we don't like to call it first team and second team. So, yeah, it's just two Hamilton teams that have been put through. And I see Villagers have done the same thing and, and a lot of other teams done the same thing, you know. So, a lot of these teams use it as, as I mean, you know, I can, t I can speak from experience that the Hamilton's are using it for, um, as as preseason fitness really before the community cup so we i think we've evenly spread out our two teams and, and just using it as you know game time and, and collision time and you yeah know, there's nothing better than, than in the game situation to get some contact and all that things on the body so that's how we're using it in, come this coming weekend the other team that i that i see is wpra davidson boards who are they i think they're an invitational side that davidson's boards are sponsoring so davidson boards oh is that the, the name of the sponsor yeah, okay, okay davidson boards is, is the is the sponsor of that team and yeah, again, that's just to be a bunch of guys from all over the place that have come together and are playing in that division. Obviously, good players that they feel can, can not, compete. It's not the Western Province Rugby Academy side. Um, as far as I understand, the Academy side will have some players in there. Okay, um, okay. But yeah, but I think the team will be sponsored by Davidson Boards and then I think Anton Moorman has taken some of his Academy guys and, and, and put them in that team. Yeah, of course, uh, Anton Moorman's very instrumental there at the uh, new Western Province Rugby Academy out in the Tokai area. We'll get him on the show one of these days and we'll find out what the Western Province Rugby Academy is all about. We'll take an ad break and when we come back, we're going to start taking a look at some w what's happening in the world of Western Province Rugby and certainly paying a little bit more attention to the Stormers uh, before they get started in two weeks' time. Back with you in a moment. Welcome back, folks. Yes, of course, it is Cape Rugby TV, and I don't need to remind you that you can find us on Twitter, and if you want that handle, at Cape Rugby TV. Paul Dalport, what's your Twitter handle? Uh, at Paul Dalport 9. And Morgan Newman, what's your Twitter handle? At Morgan 12 Newman. Why is it at uh, Morgan 12 Newman? Uh, I actually tried to change it, but I can't. But yeah, 12 used to be the number that I played rugby at, so I still play rugby at uh, number 12. So yeah, I just thought it uh, works why, hand in hand. Why did you try to change it? Well, I prefer to have a 13 just because of my brother's lucky number. But yeah, it didn't work. So uh, you I can't change your username. You can't change your username. <laughs> so I stick with Morgan 12 Newman. And Paulie, yours is of course uh, Paul Delport 9 because of the fact that you play scrum off most of your life. That's pretty much it, yeah. All right Simple. then. Let's take a look now at uh, the uh, warm-up match. Of course, the team that played against the Bulls over the weekend and the uh, Stormers coming through there. DHL Stormers team played against the Bulls. It was here, Plon Kubis van Dijk, Jean de Jong, Jean de Villiers, captain that side, Damien de Allende, Dimitri Katsukilis, Luis Kroeder, Duane Vermeulen, Scott Berg is the vice-captain, Sio Khaleesi, Ruan Boerte, Reynard Elstedt, Franz Molar, Biscaro, and Tabeni, and Steven Kutsov. 26-9 win for the Stormers, the DHL Stormers over the Bulls. Sio Khaleesi went over the whitewash twice, Dimitri Katsukilis, Scott van der Breda also scoring there. And then the upcoming fixtures on the 7th of February, the Stormers take on the Kings and PE. And in Wellington, you can find the Stormers up against Boerland. That's on the 15th. But if we look at that match there, and uh, now, we, of course, by now we now know the sad news is that Jean de Jong is out. We don't know for how long yet, but uh, he's got a meniscus tear in his knee. 
the news would have broken by now, you would you would know about that. Uh, he's got a meniscus tear. Morgz, uh, you've had knee surgery before. Um, meniscus is not quite as bad as ACLs and and and, and so on. But uh, what, what can what can John be uh, expecting here? Yeah, meniscus is is normal from my understanding. I'm not a doctor, but it's the cartilage between the knee between the between the joints. So if he's got that torn, I think uh, you're looking at about six to eight weeks generally before before he gets back on the park. But then again, you know. When the guys are playing at that level, they'll make sure that's 200% before he, before he comes back. So you're probably looking between six and ten weeks yeah. you know, before he's back yeah. in the park, which is a, a massive loss for the for the for the Stormers. You know, I think Shwan was now this year really gonna I think put his stake another claim to get to get that Springbok berth number 13 back, and now he's out for six to ten weeks. So yeah, it's gonna be a massive blow, and now probably Damien Allen will probably move in there and then. They'll find another winger to take the place of uh, for the year for that. that well, you also know you also know a little bit more about uh, knees surgeries and that like that. From what I understand, the meniscus is between the patella and the joint. Mm. Uh, they just need to shave it a bit. It doesn't have to be removed or yeah. there's no major surgery involved. Huh? Yeah, well, James. Hopefully, hopefully it's just a flap, just a horn, and they, they, they shave it off. But worst case scenario, it'll be a bucket handle tear where it's actually torn and they have to go in and, and, and suture it down. That that'll take a little bit longer. But hopefully for Jean and I think all the the storm sake and all of us all of us fans um hopefully it's just a horn they can shave it off quickly uh and yeah like morgi said he'll, he'll be back six to six to eight weeks yeah and uh, for the folks who, uh, let me quickly explain to you what i think what paul is meaning there is that the joint uh, the, the the cartilage sit like this so if there's a tear then there's a slight little a slip like this so what they then do is they just cut that off so that these two join nice and smoothly is that right paulie that's right more or less that's right. Okay, yeah, I don't know what a bucket, bucket handle tear is though. A bucket handle tear is if it, if, it, if, it, if, if it tears right through on both sides and it lifts up like a bucket handle. Oh. And you can carry your knee around wherever <laughs> you want to go. Okay, it doesn't happen. Um, and then that, that generally just a bigger injury, so they have to suture that down again. Yeah. Whereas if it's just on the side and it's nicked and there's a horn flapping in and out of the joint, that's quite easy. They just chop that off. They and chop it off and then, and then the, the, the joints... Uh, they just smooth it. Smooth right. over, over that again. Dr. Delport 101. Dr. Delport, <laughs> yes, and I'll be coming in as... Um, <laughs> Nurse, nurse JP. <laughs> yeah, um, sponge please. Uh, but if we look at this team here, these guys have played against the Bulls 26-19. Uh, um, and uh, Paulie, I was going to ask you about the fact that Victor Matfield made his return, but I don't think any of us actually on the show want to talk about that. Um, if there are any of you watching us right now and you care to comment on Victor Matfield playing for the Bulls again, please drop us a line on Twitter or drop us a note on Facebook, as I said, on Twitter, at Cape Rugby TV or on um, Facebook. Uh, you can find us on, on, on uh, just do a search on Cape Rugby. I don't have to tell you the old handle again because we don't want to discuss the Victor Matfield issue on the show as to whether or not he should be making a comeback. Um, no, we really don't. In fact, we're starting to just get sad about it altogether. But if we look at the Stormers team, yeah, we've got a pretty good squad. Jean de Villiers is obviously there as captain again, so we got that con continuity. Skulk Berger is looking to come back. He's vice captain. But I mean, I think if, if they had a choice, they would always maybe make both of these guys captain. <laughs> the leadership skills are so abundant, Jeff. Yeah, yeah, definitely. I think we, 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 we definitely spoiled for choice in the, in the leadership department. And again, Jeff, we, 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 we touched on it earlier. You know, people are going to say these warm games don't really mean that much. But looking at that starting lineup that played, that's pretty close to what I can imagine the Stormers starting lineup to be for the first two Bragby games. So great that the guys are gelling already. They still have two more, two more warm-up games to play. So great for them also to get, to, to get a game in against quality opposition, to get our first team to play against the Bulls. Uh, was was fantastic. Yeah, yeah. But, um, you know, as much as I absolutely hate to talk about uh, Victor Matfield, he did, he did steal a few balls, apparently. So, uh, he's, he's going to be a bit of a threat. I don't know if he's going to make it through every game. He might uh, just play off the bench and he'll be a little bit of an impact player, but who knows, you know. Anyway, let's leave that as, as it may. Victor Matfield back in rugby. I mean, you know, I'm getting, to be honest with you, I'm getting a little bit tired of, of, of these big, and I was thinking about it this morning, no disrespect to Jacques Cullis, but he's playing in the, in the T20 for the Cobras. Uh, but uh, about four weeks ago, we, we watched the biggest retirement um, production probably in the history of mankind, and goodbye to the king, and good, the king is leaving, and the king is retiring, as if we'll never, ever see him on the cricket field again. But there's certainly a difference between retiring from international rugby, retiring from super rugby, super 15 rugby, test match rugby, sevens rugby. If you retire, you must retire. Um, don't then go say, well, I'm never ever going to play again. Because clearly Victor Matfield and the likes, are, they haven't retired. They can just go play another game. So we'll see them again. They'll probably start playing sevens soon. Paulie? <laughs> 
<laughs> Probably, you never know, Jess. <laughs> All right, let's leave the victim Matfield in the retirement saga as it, as it is. Uh, Evox Advanced Nutrition is, of course, and there you see it in the back of... Uh, that's the number. Okay, you'll, that'll come back up in a second or so. Evox Advanced Nutrition is the official sports nutrition supplier to Western Province Rugby and the DHL Stormers. So they would have been powering uh, the Stormers to victory over the Bulls, certainly in that warm-up game. Okay, so you want to win for yourself the before, the during, and the after pack. All right, we'll start off here with the after, as we did last week. Okay, so there you see that's your rapid recovery. So rapid recovery is what you need after the game. This is the most important of all practices, all sessions. There you go. On the back of the screen right now, that's what you're going to SMS to double three two eight zero. Okay, so this is for the after. This is for the before. Cyto crank. This you use before uh, your matches, before your training. Gives you a great kick um, and, and really lifts your energy levels before you start training. And then, of course, to keep you going during your practice sessions or during your matches, super carbo. All right. So we've got the before, we've got the during, we've got the after. If you want to win for yourself this rugby pack, just SMS the uh, name of the official sports nutrition supplier to the um, number 33280. Evox Advanced Nutrition, who is the official sports nutrition supplier to Western Province Rugby and the DHL Stormers. Uh, of course, it is um, Evox. So just SMS the word Evox to 33280. All right, it's as simple as that. All right, so those are your um, competition winners, and, uh, or at least that is your Evox competition. Remember what I said, double three two eight zero. so get your cell phones out, and that's the word that you need to send um, to that number to uh, put yourself in line to win that um, training pack. All right, we'll take an ad break, and when we come back, we'll start taking a look at what's happening in the world of Western Province Rugby in terms of refereeing and coaching. Back with you in a sec. Welcome back, folks. Cape Rugby TV it is. Uh, yes. So um, lots of referees courses coming up, and this is the, what we're going to talk about now, is the opportunity for you to become a referee at Western Province Rugby. What we want to do is we want to show the rest of the world that we can generate more referees than any other country in the world. All right, and we want to do that in Western Province. We want to do it first. Now, the obstacle in the past has been that referees courses are difficult to get to. They're quite expensive and so on. Western Province Rugby for the next three weeks is putting on free referees courses. Okay, so if you want to become a referee and you want to then end up one day refereeing at your school or your club or potentially even higher, referees, and, and of course, if you just want to understand the game better, I think it's actually probably something I should do. Um, just to understand the game better. I know it's something Morgan Newman should definitely do. But if you want to go for a free referees course, just SMS, and you see the number at the bottom of the screen right now, 33280, right? You send your name uh, to 33280, and someone at Western Province Rugby will phone you back. Let's take a look at the dates now for those referees courses. There you see it uh, from uh, half past seven until three o'clock in the afternoon. Um, so it's not very, well, it's, it's a fairly long day, but it's not too bad. But on the 8th, on the 15th, and on the 21st. So that's for the next three Saturdays in a row. The 8th, the 15th, and the 21st. So you've got more than enough time. It's free of charge. It's happening at Hartia S. Belleville. And then there's, of course, a goodie bag and a couple of lucky draws just for fun. And then, of course, there you see it on the screen. Double three two eight zero. if you're interested. So it is very easy, folks. Just double three two eight zero. Send uh, your name to 33280, uh, the keyword is rugby. So you've got to use the word rugby. You send that to 33280, followed by your, um, your details, your name. And then Western Province Rugby will phone you back. Okay, so very important. Remember that keyword. Just send the keyword rugby to 33280, and then followed by your name. And someone at Western Province Rugby will phone you back, and you can go on that free course at Hartier S. Belleville for the next three Saturdays. And let's see if we can get as many referees to take up that opportunity. Now, remember the bonus here. Once you've done the course, you now are a referee. You're a qualified referee. You're certified. But to become a referee, you can join the society at Western Province. And then after that, um, and I think the society has got a fee, but then after that, you can basically referee on a Saturday and uh, make a bit of pocket money. And I think uh, Western Province is paying 200 rand a game. So it's a great way for you to, to get a bit of income um, on a Saturday, a bit of pocket money, and doing it in a, in a game that you love um, to stay involved in. Uh, Morgs, I don't know your thoughts. No, look, I mean, even if you don't want to be a re become a referee, I think it's important that you just use it to, to, get, to gain knowledge of the game, you know. Often we see in the club games, there are too many referees on the side of the field that don't really know the rules, you know. So all the spectators out there that now think they know the rules, go, and go down and for the next three weeks and see if you really know what you're talking about, you know. We're all so quick to complain about what the referees and the calls they're making on the side of the field. But put yourself in their shoes, I think it becomes a different story, you know. So. Well, we, we also seem to quite, quite often in the, you know, we quite often complain about referees. 
uh, if you're tight on referees, you don't really have a choice on who you choose. I mean, Paulie, you want to have as many referees like having depth in a team. You want a first team, a second team, a third team. The more refs you've got, the more better refs you're going to get. Yeah, you do. And if, if you're passionate about rugby, because not, not everybody can play. Um, you know, not even if, you, if you're not a good player, you may have had an, an injury in the past and you, you want to stay involved in, in rugby, be it in coaching. Now there's just another avenue. Go and, go, go and do the referees course. We're chatting to people like Andre Watson and Tapa Henning. They want people that are firstly passionate about it and people that have played the game. It's easier to become a ref if you've, if you've played rugby on, at any level. Um, so yeah, people people should really go out there and, and, and go and do the course. Yeah, of course, folks, the numbers are limited. So, um, you know, get in there early. Um, I think they're going to be able to fit about 40 or 50 people in a course um, for the day. So make sure you get your uh, details into problems as soon as possible. Remember that keyword is rugby to double three two eight zero. Of course, some referees courses coming up at Western Province as well on the 7th of February. That's this coming Friday uh, from uh, 1 o'clock until 8 o'clock. That's at Brookside and Villages. The dress code is uh, track shoes and shorts and the fee there uh, for uh, the coaching course is of course 250 Rand. But I'm pretty sure that once you're qualified as a coach, you can go and make that money back easy. So just 250 bucks to do your uh, level one coaching course. That's at Brookside. And I suggest you get a hold of Western Province Rugby there to find out if you can get in for that coaching course. The telephone number at uh, Western Province Rugby is uh, 021 659 4600. Alternatively, go check it out on the Western Province Rugby website. It's now time for us to take a look at the global rugby wrap. Let's see what's happening in the world of rugby. France, of course, in the Six Nations, it was a win for them over England but it's pretty tight I tell you towards the end there um, England was uh, in the lead and France managed to score a, a thriller there Arno Boerta will be missing another six months that after an ACL injury Sevens legend Waisele Serevi is going to be taking part in the Cape Town Tens this weekend Henry Spate has become eligible for Australia in uh, that will only happen in September in 2014 and Cheryl Calder has joined the Sharks as consultant now, uh, talking about Cheryl Calder, and those of you that don't know much about her, she's, of course, the Oculus Specialist. She helped the uh, Jake White's team to the 2007 World Cup. She's helped lots of other sports specialists. Paul, you've worked with Cheryl in terms of hand-eye coordination. What did she do for you guys? Miss Jeff, she's, she's absolutely incredible. She's actually been based at SAS, uh, where, where we train out in Stellenbosch for the last couple of years. And even, even if it's just one or, one or two things uh, that... that that, that she shows you, um, it really has helped a lot. Give and us that, an example. What kind of, what kind of, uh, just one little example of what she would do? Because you know these guys got tricks. I mean, what's one yeah. thing that, that, that you could um, say? Well, the, the, the one thing she had, Jabs, was a, a series of programs on a, on a computer, and you obviously start on level one, and you build your app, and it's fantastic in a, in a group or in a, in a team because the guys become very competitive, and when you're competitive, you get better very quickly. And then also just so bringing things So what must you do when, like when, when the computer's there? What mean? Oh, James, it's, it's, it's different things. So it's your, it's your, your, obviously your reaction time. So it would start, so level one would start with something very, very easy. It would be the, the back of a card and the card flipping around, and when you see the face, you, you press, and then it would, it, would, it would then work up from, from that where eventually you're looking at 3D pictures, and right. you try, you're timing yourself, so you see how quickly you see the 3D picture and it would just go into just a, a whole lot of re reaction things. So if, if you see this, you press J. If you see this, you press Y. If you see this, you press A. So it's also th it's thinking while you're seeing. It's not just clicking a button. It's actually getting all the things right. Which so you actually need to be able to spell to be able to do this eye <laughs> test. <laughs> <laughs> or just, uh, just know where the, where the letters, letters are on the keyboard. Yeah. Let's uh, talk there about the Six Nations quickly. Um, I don't know how many of you guys watched it there, but um, France... Uh, uh, taking, putting one over England, Morgs, a uh, tight game. Yeah, a surprise result, I would have thought, you know, going into the French also, you know, they're very much like Marty's and UCT, they start <laughs> very slowly, so, yeah. you know, I would, have, I would really have expected England to, England to have gotten over the French, but again, you know, the French at home is a different story, a different kettle of fish altogether, so, Good start for the French, and I think they'll, they'll be look, they look good for the Six Nations this year. And then wrapping it up, of course, Cape Town 10s it is this weekend. There's going to be a lot of action there, a lot of fun. Bob Skinstad, Robbie Fleck, and the guys have started a tournament that of world class. There's going to be lots of excitement there. And in this case, uh, Serevi, the world legend sevens player. Paulie, he's going to be playing in the 10s. It's going to be a huge attraction. Yeah, exciting. I think that's what, the, that's what people want to see. It's like a global superstar like Serevi, and then... Obviously, another superstar like Morgan Newman. I'll be there Friday and Saturday supporting Morgan. Uh, looking, looking forward to a couple of good days there. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm a, I've, I've had the privilege of uh, doing one of the inaugural matches at the Cape Town Stadium when we, when we did the Legends 10 there. And we had uh, Tana Umaga and Tim Horan and, 
uh, you know, it was just a world-class setup. It really is fantastic. So, folks, if you have half a chance, get down there to Hamilton's um, this coming weekend at the Cape Town Tens. And make no mistake, it is not just a couple of fields. There are beer gardens. There are air-conditioned um, uh, gazebos. There's places for people to set up. It is excellent. Get on to the Tens this weekend and, uh, yeah, see if you can see the Cape Rugby uh, TV cameras around there and come say hello. Paul Delport, thanks for joining us on the show, and we'll catch you again hopefully next week. Sure, Jeff. Lovely being here. Fantastic. Morgs, have a good rugby weekend. Thanks, Jeff. You too. You playing this weekend? Yep, playing for the, the Hamilton's Raiders. So, yeah, looking forward to it. It starts on Friday and it, uh, body will be sore by Saturday, but looking forward to it. Good luck for that. There we go, folks. That's a wrap of Cape Rugby TV. We'll see you again next week, Wednesday. Remember, the repeat for this show will be on Saturday and uh, clips and highlights on YouTube. Just go to uh, www.youtube.com forward slash Cape Rugby TV. We'll see you guys next week. Same time, same place. Have a fantastic rugby weekend. Bye-bye.